But what I'm going to do now is add another ingredient, which I don't always add, but uh, it's more of a force of habit, really, is I add a small amount of lime. Now, now I don't add a busting amount. And this is what I call, we call the French lime here. It's crushed shells. It's a mixture of uh, calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. CAE. Oh, CAO, just calcium oxide and magnesium oxide, and according to the packet, this is 42.5% calcium and 3% magnesium, which is a nice mix. We'll discuss what the optimums are in soil management in another video, hopefully, sometime. You don't need a lot of lime, and this one is quite slow, slow acting. I think it's. See, this is damaged straw, it's all damaged, but it's perfectly, perfectly fine for composting. I mean, you don't have to use straw, again, and it's quite dry this one, so I think maybe we'll give it a, we'll give this a soak. And then, adding water to the heap, it's critical that the water is added in stages as you go along. It's not all dumped on at the end, because it just doesn't work that way. You actually need, you want to, you need to incorporate, like I say, you're cooking here. You're just not planning to eat the, eat the product afterwards. But you're certainly planning to eat the plants you grow with it. So it's a good idea to make a good substrate for them because it's part of the cycle. Right, when it comes to adding water, the amount you add varies on how much the material you have is. But there's a rule of thumb. You're not going to add more than 10 to 12 gallons. Certainly, no more than 15 gallons per square per cubic meter. So, an area with these two cubic meters here, there are a maximum of 30 gallons. I'd like to say a maximum of 25. This particular material, because it's quite moist already by this straw, probably going to add about. Mm, Something in the region, I suppose, of about 10 to 15 gallons, about half that amount. Yeah, the water has to be added to the layers, as I say, as you build not in one big fount, one big swoop at the end. Similarly, it's always better to add with a watering can than with a hose, because you just can't really measure it with a hose. This way I know that I'm adding approximately three, three gallons to there. In terms of husk manure, I'm adding a barrel, a square metre per layer. And you see this is, uh, this is, this is particularly wet because it's been exposed to rain, and it's also on shavings, which is not the best material, but it's fine. The lignin content makes it difficult for the bacteria to get at. The uh, general rule of thumb, mix your brown with your greens, is actually incorrect. Because, well it's not incorrect, so what I should say is that the explanation of why you mix browns with greens is incorrect. The idea that browns are high carbon and greens are high nitrogen is rubbish. Completely false. The difference about them brown material, your woody material, is lignin based. Lignin is a tough material, it's wood basically, whereas your greens are cellulose. The cellulose is not as tough. But the two of them are composed of approximately the same ratios of carbon and nitrogen. There's no difference. The difference is simply that the uh, uh, that the access to the nitrogen in cellulose-based green material is much easier than, it, than the access to the nitrogen from lignin-based woody material. This carbon-nitrogen idea that is promoted on greens and browns is a bunch of bull. Complete and other rubbish and a misconception. And although the practice is correct of mixing the materials, the reasoning behind it is wrong. And this is why a lot of people don't really understand compost. But Anyway, like I say, we're going to lay two barrel loads of horse manure on this. The 
materials you use, just don't you alternate them. Which is the main thing, is just to alternate. Just to keep it constantly changing in layers. Now there is a reason for this. The main thing is, is the optimum conditions for the thermophiles are quite critical. I mean, the way evolution has worked with with bacteria and fungi is that they're pretty much the masters of niche differentiation. That is, is they'll often sit dormant and do nothing in exactly the right conditions are there for them. And then their their growth rate uh, is exponential. And this could be the, this is a very minor difference between I mean, the difference of uh, a few percent in moisture, a little bit you know, uh, a tiny relative increase in the carbon to change in carbon to nitrogen ratio, the amount of oxygen. Um, the ambient temperature, despite what people would often tell you, isn't as critical. It doesn't matter. I mean, I've built heaps like this before using ice instead of water because everything was frozen. Once the thermophiles get going, they soon melt it, they soon create their optimum condition. This is pretty much their main weapon in the microbial war is the heat. And using this heat uh, largely to freeze out other organisms. And these thermophiles are extremely carbon hungry. They consume huge quantities of stuff. Anyway, let's get this layer of grass on. This grass can slime, can create a barrier. So it's the one you don't want to go too thick on. When you go too thick on anything, then you want to go thick on the straw. Because this is pretty much your, it's, it's both your moisture and your, and your um, oxygen sponge. shavings. As you can see it's mainly shavings and it's very wet. It's also full of worms which is an indication that it's not eating properly because the worms don't like it when it gets hot. <coughs> Much more important to encourage on the final stage in stage three. As you can see there's a lot of worms just in here. I don't know if it's visible. You can see the Small brandling worms in there. They're actually extremely good, but not in this, this point of the, the process. So that's one barrier. You see this, this manure is very wet and it's so full of worms, it's unreal. A lot of shavings. It's not a big problem, a lot of people don't like this manure and shavings. And on its own it can be a real peak to get to break down because you do need that initial kick of nitrogen. Here they've actually got chicken manure as well, but it's not being used today, but hopefully in the future that can be used. And that's extremely good for helping to break down the shavings because it has a very high quantity of available nitrogen in it. And that's what the bacteria need. It's not so much that they need the nitrogen, it's the fact that the nitrogen in the sh held in the wood shavings is locked out. It's very different to get their, ha to get, get their hands on it if they only had hands. But it's not even accessible to them. So what you do is you should provide them with a nitrogen source that is easily accessible. They'll use that nitrogen to break the wood down, the lignin, and release the nitrogen within it. Calculation so you put somewhere probably between six and nine gallons on this so far, let's say eight. It's a nice figure. This is about half of what we want to do, roughly add.